Hi, I'm Robin White from Fantasy Wire, and I'm the guy that makes the Wire Fairies. Ever since I started making Wire Fairies a few years ago now, I've always shared on the website how I make them. But over the last year or so, I've written a book called The Art of Fantasy Wire. And the reason I wrote the book is I think that good art flows from good design. And I wanted to go all the way back from not just explaining how you make the fairy, but how you think about the design, how you think about the pose, how you think about putting drama into the actual design of the, of the piece. And I think some of those things can be thought of as, de, as a design process and therefore it could be passed on. So I wanted to go through the entire process. The reason I've chosen Trillian is that she's relatively simple to make. And what I mean by that is uh, she's not in a complicated pose. Her arms and her legs are in an orientation that you can get all of the way around. Uh, she, there's nothing complicated about that sort of pose to make. But probably more crucially, she stood on one leg. Now, clearly, there is a structure inside the skeleton of this figure that helps me to do that. And I wanted to go through how that's achieved as well. She's also got very dramatic hair, and I thought it's a good example to show you how to make the hair. So this is Trillian, and I'm going to walk you through each of the different stages of how I thought about the design and how we execute each part of it. I, I would estimate that 50% of the entire time that it consumes from me on making any one fairy is in the design. You need it to have it where the sky is the backdrop. Pick, if you like, a shape of the body uh, where I can sort of get all the way around the limbs to make them. Uh, I'm always looking for things that I could model where wire is the medium of choice. Have the fairy in a pose where the hair is away from the body. The difference between 2D and 3D, we're only going to get one hit. You've got a complete freeze frame of an emotion and therefore you have to express that emotion as powerfully as possible. Uh, so never mind the sort of body pose and what that's telling you, just the neck and the wrist has such a powerful effect on the design. I always like to try and get some sort of visual illusion into a sculpture. It, Dancing with Dandelions by far the most popular sculpture that I've done and I think it's because it contains all of these elements would at least go along with the theory that she could generate enough lift that the the things that aren't there are informing you. So I'll print that out, go down to the workshop and we'll start making the fairy. I've now got my four strands and all I'm going to do now is just twist it. I'm going to measure from the end of there. Now that's all very well if I was making a freestanding fairy. Put that into there. So we've got an approximate sort of body shape now. I need to replace that leg with the rod that's going to support it. Effectively that leg replaced with a rod. It sort of looks a bit sort of just not enough energy in it at the moment. I'm trying to get a centre of gravity over the base. Fairly happy with that. So that's the skeleton we've got. Starting with the the rib cage and the thighs where most of the sort of bulk in a figure is. I'm trying to create the shape of the fairy figure. So her rib cage is going to be in front of her spine. Getting the, the head size and position is, is a sort of tricky one. Two strands of 1.6 and I've been adding it very loosely to sort of create a cage. So I'm going to change to four strands of 1.2. Uh, one of the sort of rules that I sort of laid out earlier was get the skeleton right uh, and don't add wire to it until you're happy with the skeleton. I'm going to show you how to make a sort of multi-strand sort of bundle of wire to attach. It's just a piece of wood with a slot in it. So I've now got six strands, uh, wire twisting pliers. You don't actually need these. And then cut that loop off. So I've effectively got a needle with, with six strands of wire on there that I can now apply the wire. It's probably easier for me to illustrate how I decide where I'm going to route the wire through and how to actually apply the wire. Locked in, and that means I can pull against it on, on either half of this. The le for the length of the limb, you want no more than about two spirals. I'm almost thinking even now, I probably need to be making my way to the head so I can hide this sort of ugly twisted part at the back of the head. 
convex, so external, or concave, so internal, is there is a stage that I've sort of called the panic stage, where you sort of think it's all going wrong, and just hang in there. If you've stuck to your measurements, keep going, keep adding wire. It's probably like a mental trick that's being played on you because it's not going to look right until the last bit of detail goes in. A hard point is a feature on the surface that ought to be created by a skeleton, but it's not present in our skeleton. She sort of looks like she's getting to the shape that I want. Still quite a lot of volume to go on there. How is the consistency of the wire going to be as it sort of builds up? So I'm, I'm thinking about the frame that I'm creating to add the next layer of volume all the time. We're gonna add the boobs and I'm gonna add a sort of frame, like a ghost image of where the boob is going to be. I think there's probably three stages to sort of doing boobs. You start to sort of create that sort of pectoral muscle. So we've arrived at what I would call the clay state. You know, earlier on, I pointed out that I could sort of poke through almost anywhere. There's nowhere I can get through this figure now. She's absolutely sort of solid. Uh, and that's all arrived just at the time we've got to the shape that I want, which is that is one of the big challenges of doing this to get it to this density as the as you arrive at the shape i've created a sort of bit of a button now i just want to create the sort of main body of the nose now the eye sockets all i'm going to do is hit it with this hammer where the eyes should be go around the whole figure smoothing the surface out taking all of those bumps away and wherever you tap it with a hammer, you tend to create a little bit of slack. So you, you sort of tension it up. And what I'm gonna do is just draw some approximate wings on the floor. So what I'm now gonna do is put them in a pistol drill, spin That's going to attach to the back of the fairy. So if we're following this as our sort of design, essentially, although it looks a right sort of knotted mess at the moment, when I'll put it on the table and sort of flatten it all out and we'll work on one wing at a time, making sure that you've got the shape of the wing that you actually want. You never want to have a full diamond visible on the outside of the frame. So what I'm going to do now is sew it on. So I've put the veins in the wings. Now, what we're gonna do is attach the wings to the fairy. Now, I want the wires to go almost backwards, so I can't sort of poke a hole from this end. What I've gotta do is go from under the armpit where I want it to come out. So let's just, so you go, that one goes straight up there. If I can get this one to go in as easy, I'll be very pleased. But this is the first opportunity I've had since making the wings where I can actually get them to a nice shape. So the first stage is to put a frame in that will be invisible when you're sort of looking at the hair. But it's a lot, it's a few very strong wires following the shape that I want the curl of the hair to go into. But that's sort of the curl that I want. So I've got the, the frame in, that's made out of the high tensile wire, and you can see the, the approximate shape that the uh, hair is going to take. And I'll know it on the camera, it must just look a complete sort of rat's nest of, of a mess. And this is how you make curly hair, perfectly capable of sort of supporting itself.